Welcome to the talk about our submitted short paper, Partial Convolution Network for Metal Artifact Reduction in CT Preprocessing. My name is Laura Helwege, and I work as a research assistant and PhD candidate at the Institute of Medical Engineering at the University of Lübeck. Today, I am talking about a network that reduces metal artifacts. These artifacts arise from multiple sources of disturbances in the CT projection data, the most prominent one being beam hardening. A metal object that is placed inside the scanned anatomy results in the characteristic metal trace in the projection data and therefore leads to artifacts when using a simple filtered back projection. By using a convolutional neural network, which is trained in a supervised manner, the goal of the paper is to replace the metal trace in the projection data. Hence, we reject the values in the metal trace and replace them with zeros. Additionally, we will use a binary mask of the trace and we sample the resulting projection data into patches of size 128 times 128. This approach results in holes of zeros that need to be filled. This is a commonly known task called image inpainting. To improve the performance of the network over conventional convolution, we use the so-called partial convolution that has already been used successfully in natural image in painting. The general idea is to employ the binary mask of the metal trace to restrict the convolution onto those areas where the values under the convolution kernel are not all zero, which means that the norm of the windowed mask should be greater than zero. Additionally, the convolution result is adjusted by the parameter r that depends on how many entries in the convolution were valid. Also, the mask is updated by the same condition as the convolution. Here is a quick example of the computation for three different cases in a simple image with zero padding on all edges. As you can see, for the first two cases, the mask does contain valid values and the correction factor r is computed accordingly. For the third case, the convolution result is just set to zero without having to compute r since the mask's norm is zero. Let us have a look at the network architecture. As you can see, the network has a simple unit structure, which means we have first an encoding and then a decoding part with cross connections by concatenation between the layer outputs of the same size. If you have a look at the number of channels for each feature map, you see that all of them are multiplied by factor two. This is because we have to process the binary mask of the feature map in the same way as the feature map itself. We train the network with a combination loss of mean absolute error and total variation. In all, we train for 100 epochs with approximately 180,000 training pairs of simulated projection data of a human body phantom. We evaluated the performance of the network by the mean performance of three methods. As benchmark, we use bilinear interpolation of the values in the metal trace. Also, we compare the proposed partial convolution network against a conventional convolutional one. In this table, you can see the mean squared error, the mean absolute error, and the structure similarity index in the projection domain blue and the image domain green. Unfortunately, we do not observe superiority to the bilinear interpolation for neither methods. This tells us that we can further improve all results by adjusting training parameters or network architecture. And that is because we know of many in-painting tasks um, where the CNN performs better than linear interpolation. What we actually want to compare is the performance with and without partial convolution. On the one hand, we see that in the projection domain, both networks perform similarly. In the image domain, on the other hand, the partial convolution network outperforms the conventional convolution one. These results can be verified as, uh, visually as well. Here we see that the inpainting result in the projection domain looks similar. Um, in this example, we also see a smoother transition on the borders of the filled in region for the partial convolution network. And here we see the results in the reconstruction. 
The partial convolution network, upper right, produces fewer dark artifacts compared to the conventional convolution in the upper left. Of course, these results are not yet optimal when we look at the ground truth in the lower right image, but we conclude that the partial convolution indeed works better for the inpainting task, and thus we can, can include the con partial convolution layer in other networks as well for our further research. Thank you so much for your attention.